Now, Northern Exposure Mania is hot and heavy here in 2024 because the series is streaming on Amazon Prime. We're going to watch Chris from the show, John Corbett, talking about his pathway to the series. Uh, his first role was acting was on The Wonder Years. You'll remember it when they show a clip. Hopefully copyright keeps it in there. But Corbett has a very in-depth interview about his upbringing, how meeting his father really for the first time led to his acting career. This is probably the best, most in-depth interview of, of John Corbett. Northern Exposure is TV's latest cult hit series. Set in Sicily, Alaska, it has a moose for a mascot and a DJ who dishes out philosophy. A little special in-studio guest today, the blue-eyed beauty, about six months old. Anybody missing said item, you might want to pop into town here and pick her up. The role of Chris in the morning has made John Corbett a desirable actor and a definitive sex symbol. The thing I learned, folks, this is absolutely key. It's not the thing you fling, it's the fling itself. John was born in Wheeling, West Virginia. He was raised by his mom after his parents divorced. He wasn't a good student, but he did find success doing commercials. DHL, faster to more of the world. John made his acting debut in the series, The Wonder Years. One of the boys on our block was killed in Vietnam several weeks ago. Oh, I, I know. I mean, uh, Karen told me. Another meaningless death. I beg your pardon? I just have a little trouble justifying dying for a government that systematically represses its citizens. We're broccoli anyone? But it's the northern lights of Alaska that have made John Corbett's career shine. Our correspondent Jennifer Vallapi spoke with him about his new image. You are right now considered a pretty hot sex symbol. Oh yeah? So, a sex symbol? Uh, yeah. Thank you. Are you involved with anyone? Nope. Do you want to get married? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like you... to be married before uh, my time mm -hmm. on this little ball's over, yeah. Mm -hmm. If you could pick what you were looking for in a woman, mm. what would you pick? I don't know. I still don't know. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm on that daily. Every woman I meet is kind of right off the bat. Is this the one? You know, could, could she be the one? Are you the one? You know, are you married if you are? Would something happen that would make you want to leave your husband for me? I mean, all this thing goes through my head at, at 100 miles an hour for all the different women I meet, you know, all throughout the day, little fantasies. It was actually a broken heart that sort of led you out to L.A. and, and got you into the business in the first place. Why don't you tell me how that happened? Some friends of mine were planning a trip to California, and they invited me along. And I had had my high school sweetheart. You know, we'd been going out for a couple of years, and it was my first girlfriend. You know how you're in love. And, you kind of never forget that one. After about a week out here, one of my best friend uh, back in, in Wheeling called me up to tell me that my girlfriend was going out with someone else. You know, they were at a party and they were kissing and doing the whole bit there. And uh, it just really, it stopped me. You know, I couldn't, I couldn't eat, I couldn't go back home. I was like devastated. And then I caught a Greyhound bus to, uh, to LA and, and my dad lives in, in Los Angeles and my mom and dad divorced when I was two. And I had seen my dad maybe three times uh, and I just went and found his address and knocked on the door and mm -hmm. uh, it was very strange. I mean, you know, I, I had spent more time with teachers and, and then I had my own, my own dad. Uh, what was it like meeting him really for the first time in a way? It was, it was a little uncomfortable. I was very nervous. I didn't know what he was remarried. I didn't know what uh, the reaction was going to be of, of this big tall goon knocking on the door, you know, saying, can I hang out here for a little bit, you know? I was apprehensive about that. Uh, I didn't know what to do, though, you know? I had no money. I had a couple of bucks. Here I am just uh, trying to mooch off my dad, I guess. I don't know. Well, your story is very interesting because here you are, your father gets you a job in a steel factory right, right. and then you had a back injury mm -hmm. and that puts you 
out of working and back into school, right? Yeah, basically. Uh, I had some. I had an accident. And some pipes came off of, of a rack and hit me in the back, and and uh, I had lower back injury, and and I couldn't do that kind of work anymore. You know, it was it was all manual, all using your muscles, and I went to junior college. So how did that go? It didn't go very well. <laughs> I was lost after about two weeks. Really? They go so fast in college. You know, I wasn't a very good student in high school, and this had been a lot of years <laughs> after. Uh, I met some people in the, uh, in the theater department, and uh, they invited me to come over and check out their class. That's, that's what turned me on this whole thing. Before you got uh, the jobs in television, before you got any real work as an actor, you got a license in cosmetology, right? Uh, absolutely, yeah. I picked cosmetology because the program was almost a year long, and I could do that in the daytime and study acting at nighttime. Mm -hmm. And uh, I thought, what a, what a good way to to make my own hours and make a living, you know, you know, setting curlers, you know, and clipping hair all day long. Are you any good at cutting hair? No, I wasn't very good at it. I only did it for a month. I went to school for a year and I did it for a month after I had gotten out. And uh, I was, I, by that time I had got a, got a couple commercials and so I was starting to do okay. And uh, You did something like 50 commercials in four years. Yeah. You did, did very it. well at commercials. I did really well at commercials, a lot of them. When you started um, getting the, the, the money that comes with being on a hit show, what was the first thing you, you ran out and bought? Well, uh, the nice thing is, for the four years I was doing those commercials, I had an experience with money, uh, a lot of money, and that, that kind of pillowed the effect of getting a lot of money all at once from, from starving to, mm -hmm. to here's thousands of dollars. I still have, it. I still have the same car uh, that I paid $5,000 for years and years and years ago, and uh, I, I really didn't buy anything, you know. Mm -hmm. Is it true you still buy your clothes in thrift shops? Yeah, yeah, that's true. This, is, uh, this whole get up here probably costs uh, 25 bucks. Total this jacket was like eight dollars. Um, yeah, I love it. I I just cannot. First off, even though I'm making pretty good money now, the cost of clothes just blows me away. When I go into a store and I see a suit for you know six hundred dollars to a thousand dollars for for a lame suit that doesn't fit me that well, and I can go into like a thrift store and buy like a really cool suit for like 25 bucks, you know, from the 50s, with like cool designs on it and stuff. It just doesn't make sense to me. And, uh, and there's only one. You go into blah, blah, blahs, and there's like 15 of the same suit, you know? What if you bump into all 15 of those guys that day that like bought that suit, right? <laughs> That's gonna be weird. Good I point. I guarantee you, yeah, it is. You're not gonna bump into that that guy wearing that red fish jacket with the, you know, the purple stripes down the side. It's like treasure hunting, you know? You never know what you're going to find in there. Uh -huh. You find some really cool stuff. Where do you see yourself in 10 years? Hopefully alive. Hopefully uh, sober, you know? I'm sober now for a year almost. Uh, I want to be sober in 10 years. That's If I don't have a wife, if I don't have a child, if, if I lose all this success and everything else, that's what I want. You had a drinking problem? Yeah, yeah. And I just quit. I, I cold turkey, uh, cold turkeyed it last April, and uh, it's the best thing that I've ever done for myself. Were there problems in your life that led you to heavy drinking? Low self-esteem. Um, not being entitled, getting certain things and not really feeling entitled to them, feeling that any moment someone's going to discover you and find out that you're a fraud, you're fake. You know, I was out there looking around and trying to find my way, and I'm finding it. Now I'm on my path. Before it was just in the dark, groping, trying to edge myself along in a wall, you know, and, mm -hmm. and uh, now I'm on my path. Where that path is going, I don't really care. You know, I'm on it. Thank you for watching Cleveland Live Music. If you like what you see, hit the subscribe button. 
and there's GoFundMe and Patreon information in the video descriptions. Thanks for making the channel grow so much.